just to reiterate a lesson because it applies to the way you do the 23 it's kind of important you remember years ago we had well we've had hundreds of them but we lectured where once you make contact period with the release of 23 technique I don't care once you make contact both masses rotate around this point and this becomes the center of both of you do you all remember that lesson from Carl because we're very conscious of our center and staying centered here and all that kind of stuff once you touch this is both of you center and the one that knows that and can keep their own center locked to it is always going to be superior period so I didn't understand it when Carl first explained it I do now if he takes a guy each on me well he can break my wrist pretty easy I'm going to break it now because anywhere he can take it anywhere he wants I don't care up down other side whatever but if I stay centered you see those that can he has to break this back you see that everyone know how that guy works well if he starts it back and I move with it how all the power is gone so if I stay centered here he can move around anywhere he wants to if I stay centered he can't do squat and I don't know of a worse wrist lock than a codinary. I hate this. But it's the same thing. If he locks me up and I turn to it, well now, he can do anything he wants. Change directions, anything, I don't care. Because he can't get any torque. Every time he tries to twist my hand in and I just come with it, who's off balance now? Well, this is another one of the advantages I see in the 23, because when you break someone hard and then have to stop, it's a problem. But if you just, now, see, no one bit of alarm, but if I move in center, what can he do? He can do something to himself, but I don't try to do anything. I just try to move. He wants to change the rules, fine. He changed them, not me. That makes sense. So once I touch, and I have done this on the street, down tell you I've done it in a bar or two, right here I'm finished. I'm completely through defending myself. Because we're UK driven. So if he wants to keep attacking me, let him. What do I care? Well he he might do something weird. Okay. He can do something weird. But if you're just worried about this one spot and not your own center and your own feet and all that, you don't have to think. Where people get hurt in fights is they start trying to think. Well, what am I going to do if he does that? You don't care what you're going to do. Just touch and move. So, want everyone to attack and you just move and whatever happens, happens. Might do something different this time. Well, that's okay too. So, you don't know. The other thing is, not that I'm going to shut up and let you work a little bit more. I'm notorious for this. I'm the worst kata teacher in the world. Because I've done this so much, and I didn't realize that my students pointed it out to me. I might break here and change hands to do Oshi Te Oshi. Or I might just start from there to begin with and do Oshi Te Oshi. I, I personally like switching hands because it gets you used to not giving a damn. But in proper color form, I would break here. Well, works just as well breaking here and changing hands. Then I get asked, well, when do you change hands? Anytime their foot touches. I don't care when. If a foot touches, I can switch hands just smooth as silk. So, if we do any stuff later on and you're wanting to do kata and I confuse you like well you broke with your left hand now you're breaking with your right hand I apologize but it just doesn't make any difference to me and if you do this enough you won't care either even on 17 you don't care I mean you might get inside with this hand for shomenate well what do you do if you keep moving you just don't care so anyway go to work on that touch and move thing for just a couple minutes and we'll go on.